Hey, what's going on, everybody? Um, so I want to share a dream with you guys about hell that I had. And this, this dream was given to me six years ago on September the 18th, 2014. And I woke up from this dream at 3.10 a.m. And in this particular point of my life, you know, I was backslidden. You know, I have I came to the revelation of Jesus Christ and I was saved, but yet I was still living a worldly life. Um, you know, I was drinking daily. I was going to the clubs and I was hanging around uh, ungodly people. And in scripture, it says that there is no fellowship between light and darkness. But in this particular point of my life, you know, I had many um, ungodly friends. And so um, I think it's very important for me to share this dream with you guys now, because I know that uh, there are so many of us that after we come um, to the revelation of Jesus Christ, that, you know, we revert back into um, our worldly way of living and a carnal way of living. And so this dream was given to me by God, you know, as a warning uh, to show me that if I continue um, this way of life, then his judgment against me and my my eternal place of existence after I I die in this physical body will be hell. And so um, I have to share this dream with you guys um, because I know a lot of people believe that um, Christians can't go to hell. And, um, and so I'm just going to share this dream that was given to me. And I, I know it was given me, to me from God. And so let me just go ahead and start with this dream. There was a guy in a contamination suit stacking human flesh on this mountain. I knew that under the mountain was the pits of hell. One guy told me that his mother was under there and that there were different levels. Jesus then appeared and he said that my friends and I think Christianity is a joke and that we weren't living according to the word. And I tried to give him an excuse, but I couldn't. I was then transferred to a club where this guy tried offering me drinks, but I refused them. And I told my friend while we were in the bathroom that we had to talk. And that was the end of the dream. And I'm not a dream interpreter, but, you know, six years after having a dream, I always go back to this dream as, you know, I recorded it. And like I said, I always record, you know, all my dreams um, in logs. And so six years after having this dream, um, you know, I just go back to it and I look at it because I knew that God was speaking to me in this particular moment in time of my life. And so I just want to go over the dream and I want to uncode, um, decode certain things about the dream because God does speak in parables. And so um, I'm just going to, you know, go over the dream again. I'm going to slow it down and I'm going to give you guys my interpretation of it. And like I said, I'm, I'm going to leave this dream itself open to interpretation because maybe as you might hear me read it, maybe something might um, pop up in your mind and maybe the Holy Spirit might give you an interpretation of what things might mean in this dream. Okay, so there was a guy in a contamination suit stacking human flesh on this mountain. Um, when I think about the contamination suit that this individual was wearing, it was white. It was an all-white contamination suit. And once you think about uh, sin, you know, God and holy, the holy angels, they can't be in the presence of sin. Sin is like a disease. It's like a, a contaminant disease. Um, very contagious. Um, they can't be holy angels and God can never be in the presence of sin. And so when I think about this contamination suit, I knew that this dream represented this individual who was in this contamination suit. I knew that this dream represented someone, a divine entity, um, a holy angel or someone else that couldn't be in the presence of sin and had to protect themselves from sin itself. And so I believe that this contamination suit represented, you know, 
um, a holy angel who was given the keys to the pits of hell um, to, to put um, those who have judged by God into their eternal place of existence. And so um, this person was wearing a contamination suit. And like I said, um, this contamination suit, I believe that it was to protect themselves from the sin, the, the, the lifestyles and the sin of these people. And even though they were dead, they were still contaminated with sin. It's almost like a, a, a dead body that has died from a very contagious uh, disease. Um, that disease is still, that virus is still going to be alive with, within the proximity of the perimeter of this person. And so the, the person, even though the, the, these people was dead and it was a whole mountain flesh of these people that he was throwing into the pits of hell, this person still was wearing a contamination suit. And so once I think about the human flesh and I think about this mountain, because in the dream, there was a, a mountain, a huge mountain of human flesh. And so, you know, scripture said that broad is the way to destruction and narrow is the way to life. And when you think about that passage, that, that really indicates that majority of this world, majority of this world is, is on a fast track way to hell. Majority of this, this world are going to be judged and they're going to be found without Christ. And so hell is going to be their eternal place of existence apart from Christ. And so when I think about that, that, that mountain of human flesh, I know that um, that mountain represents a mass majority um, of, the, of this world that we're living in. The mass population of this world that we're living in that are without Christ. Um, and then there was a guy in the dream. He said, my mother is under there. He said, my mother is under there and there were different levels. And so I... I listen to many different people testimonies and many people do say that they, they that once they had uh, a vision of hell and when they visited hell either in a dream or um a life after death uh type of experience or or a near death experience they mentioned a lot of people mentioned that hell does have different levels according to the severity of sin and the severity of the sin which was in the person and their lifestyle and whether it be would it, whether it been witchcraft or whether it been sexual immorality or whatnot depending on the severity uh, of the sin i heard that there are different levels and there are different type of torments in hell depending on the nature of the sin and the, depending on the type of lifestyle that the individual lives without christ so when this person said that my mother is under there and that there are different levels you know, I can't help but to think about the many testimonies that I've seen about the different levels of hell. And so the thing that really bothered me is when Jesus appeared and he said that my friends and I think that Christianity is a joke and that we weren't living according to the word. And, you know, um, you know, in that particular time of my life, you know, I was saved. But at the same time, Jesus Christ was my savior but he wasn't my Lord. I wasn't denying myself. You know, I wanted everything that this world has to offer. You know, I still had that carnal state of mind. And so although Jesus Christ given me revelation and it was very intimate the way he given me that revelation, I still chose to live a life in this world. And I still chose ungodly friends to hang around with. And so, you know, scripture said that Jesus Christ die for our sins once and that we he's not going to re-sacrifice himself and if we continue to live a lifestyle of disobedience then we're going to be under the, the subjection of god's uh judgment and so we don't want to fall under the judgment of god because his judgment is just and it's and it's holy and so in that dream when he told me that i think that christianity is a joke and i li wasn't living according to the word and although i tried to make him try to give him an excuse. I couldn't. I couldn't because Jesus Christ can see right through us. He knows our thoughts. He, he knows our motives. He knows everything that it is about us. And so there was nothing that I could say to him. Everything he said was just. And so when we're being judged by God, you know, every thought that we have, every motive, every action, every deed, it's going to all just be displayed before us. And then we, we're not going to be able to give God no type of excuse. It's like we're not going to have any choice but to agree because it's going to all be shown before us. 
And so that that hurt me is that, you know, in that particular point of my life, in that time period of my life, that he seen that I wasn't living according to the word. And that really hurt me. And I knew if I would have died in that particular moment in, my, in, moment in my life, I knew that I was going to be in hell. I knew that my eternal place would be hell and that God's judgment against me would have been just and accurate. And so um, in, in this dream, once the Lord gave me that revelation and once he told me about my heart, um, I was then transferred, you know, to a club and the guy, you know, was offering me drinks. And this and this is what I did a lot um, in that particular point. In, um, in my life, you know, I always went to the club, I always, you know, drunk, strong drinks, you know, and, but in this dream, I was there, I was transferred back to a club and I was given a decision to make. And the guy was offering me a drink. He was offering me a drink and I refused it based upon the revelation that Jesus Christ given me about my heart and about, you know, the darkness that was inside of me, you know, I refused to drink and I wanted to talk to my friend immediately in the bathroom. I know that the bathroom symbolizes a lot, a, a, a cleanse, a cleaning place, a place of cleansing and a place of deliverance. And so I wanted to talk to my friend in this bathroom about our lifestyle because he also was a believer of Jesus Christ. But at the same time, he was just like me living in the world, going to the club, hanging with ungodly people, just doing the thing, doing things that people in the world would do. And, you know, it was me and him in his dream. And in the dream, I told him, man, I need to talk to you in the bathroom. And I knew that in the dream, I wanted to talk to him about what Jesus had revealed to me. And so the bathroom represents a place of cleansing and the bathroom um, uh, represents a place of deliverance. And like I said, I'm not a dream interpreter or whatever, but I strongly believe that, you know, what I'm saying is accurate. And so I'm going to leave this dream up to interpretation because as you might be hearing this, you might have something that you want to tell me, you know, the Holy Spirit might be giving you something to tell me. And so I'm going to leave this dream open also for further interpretation. But, you know, a lot of people believe that once we get saved, a lot of Christians believe that once we get saved, that's it. And so we start to um, lean on our salvation like a crutch or like a pillow or some type of cushion. And we believe that we can do whatever. And I once was one of those people. I thought that, oh man, Jesus Christ saved me from the pits of hell. You know what I'm saying? From the, from the wrath from the judgment of God, I can just do whatever. I can go out here and, you know, smoke a blunt. I can go out here and um, drink and go to the clubs or whatever and listen to whatever type of music or, you know, like watch whatever type of TV shows or movies. I can do whatever the heck I want because Jesus Christ already died for my sins. But, and, and I thought that, you know, once I died, that Jesus Christ would just roll out the red carpets for me, that the, the gates of heaven would just, just open up for me as if I lived some type of righteous life. But with Jesus, through this dream, what Jesus revealed to me was the nature of my heart. And it was so dark. And so there are so many other believers out there. We just believe that we can sin. We can we can deliberately sin. We're all going to sin. You know, we're going to sin by thought, emotion, action. So many ways that we can sin. But I was a deliberate sinner. I, I intentionally went and sinned because I thought that Jesus Christ was going to just save me. You know, and... Jesus revealed to me through this dream, Jesus revealed to me the nature of my heart. And if I would have died in, in that particular point of my life, I know that I was going to hell. I just know it because my life wasn't right. And Jesus Christ was not my Lord. And Jesus Christ said, why you call me Lord? But yet you don't do what I, what, what I say. And Jesus Christ say these things a lot. He says that any man who wants to follow me, you know, must deny himself and pick up the cross. I wasn't denying it myself. You know, I want it. Whatever that the word had to offer me, whatever that it was, I wanted it. I was so fleshly at the time. I was so carnal at the time. And there are so many other believers that are out here and, and y'all are doing the same thing. And so I just want to give you, I had to share this dream with you as a warning that, you know, if once we come to the revelation knowledge of Jesus Christ and what he's done for us, we can't take that for granted. We can't take it for granted. A lot of people don't believe that Christians, Christians, can go to hell. I'm one of them type of people that believe that a Christian can go to hell. I don't believe that we can just live a lifestyle, any type of lifestyle we want, just because we think that Jesus Christ died for us. I don't think that. I, and in scripture, it doesn't even say that. And so um, I'm reminded, you know, of that parable where Jesus 
um, it was a parable where Jesus said that the owner of a house gave the, the servant duties to perform while he was gone. And he said that the good servant, I'm paraphrasing, he said that the good servant was going to do everything that he was expected to do, everything that he was listed to do, everything that he was given and commanded to do. The good servant would do that or whatever. And when the cert and when the, the owner comes back, he'll find out that his house is in perfect order. And so, you know, and then you got the other person who believes that, oh man, um, the homeowner gone. I'm just gonna wild out. I'm just gonna just, you know, I'm I'm gonna do whatever I want. I'm gonna do whatever I want to the crib. You know, I'm gonna party. I'm gonna treat the other people like crap. And you know, but what happens when that homeowner comes back unknowingly or unexpected? What type of lifestyle would you? be living in? What type of lifestyle would you have? And so I know that's a representation of the believer. It's not a representation for the unbeliever. It's symbolic for those who are in Christ, but yet, you know, we don't know when Christ is returning and we keep on thinking, man, he might turn, he, he might return. I don't know when, but I don't care when he returns. I'm just going to live my life for me today. But scripture said we must live our lives as Christ is coming back tonight. And we must be ready. You know, scripture tell us over and over again to keep that oil, to keep that oil lit, you know, to keep keep the light, keep to keep the oil filled and to keep the light lit because we don't know when Jesus Christ is coming back. And he, it tells us to be ready. And so I wasn't ready. I wasn't preparing myself. I was living like, man, Jesus might don't even come back in my lifetime. You know, I, I got to, to, to when I'm old to change my life. And there are so many other believers who are thinking like this. We're thinking that we just got forever and a day to, to live for Christ. But we don't know when Jesus Christ is coming back. And so I just want to say that, um, man, if you are a Christian and you believe that you can live whatever type of lifestyle and do whatever you want and that Jesus Christ is just going to automatically um, let you into heaven, then you're deceived. You are deceived. You know, according to this dream I had, and I was saved. I was saved. At one point in time in my life before then, I was filled with the Holy Spirit. But after I repented, you know, the Lord filled me up again. And so, um, but in this particular point in my life, I was backslidden. And I was making so many decisions without Christ. Living a lifestyle without Christ. But yet I was saved. But yet Jesus, through this dream, Jesus was telling me, if I was to die, hell would be my eternal place of existence because I made so many decisions without him and I wasn't living according to the word. Jesus said these things. He said that I thought that Christianity was a joke and scripture said that God would not be mocked. God would not be mocked. He said that we will reap what we sow. And so if you're sowing worldliness into your heart, then that's what you're going to reap. And so, um, Scripture said that um, anybody who loves the world did not have the love of the Father in them. And that was another scripture that cut me deep. So you have to ask yourself. You really have to ask yourself, do you love God? Because Jesus said, if you love me, then you will keep my Father's commandments. Do you love Christ? Or do you love the world? Because you can't love both. Either you're going to love one and hate the other. And so... Uh, if you're a Christian and, you, and, and you're saved, but yet you're living like the world, you need to re-examine your heart and you need to repent because scripture says it clear as day is that you can't serve two masters. And, I, you know, in my heart, you know, in this particular point in my life, in this time period of my life, when I had this dream, I thought that I was doing, you know, a great job in Christ, but yet I wasn't. And if, if it wasn't from this dream, if it wasn't from this dream, then I would never have been on the pathway to repentance. And so I just want to thank the Lord Jesus Christ for giving me this dream, for revealing to me the nature of my heart. You know, it was it was upon him that I don't continue to walk in darkness any longer. And so, you know, I just wanted to share this dream with you guys. And I just pray that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that it will bless you and that it will encourage you. And if you are a sinner and you're living a life in this world, that it will cause you to return back to the Lord Jesus Christ and repent. And so that's my dream. And I just I just want to say, um, be blessed and encouraged in the mighty name of Jesus. Peace.